So what did you want to reveal about these, these towns and their people? <clears throat> well, you know, so, so in, in, a prem, in, a, in a nutshell, I'm there for, for five days. So before we ever go, we're looking for towns that have an interesting story, you know, towns that are, that are small, about a thousand people or so, and towns that have seen some, some real struggles, you know, not necessarily the town that's uh, having trouble fundraising for its new Zamboni, but a town that's had its ass kicked a couple of times, you know, mm-hmm. and... Um, I mean, I think that's what makes a, 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 a town or a person interesting is sort of... Uh, the adversity they've been Exactly. The, the show has a whole sort of spirit in the face of adversity kind of theme. So, you know, we've been to places... Uh, traditional challenges, you know, that, that any small town faces, Chad, you know, the loss of industry, um, out-migration. A lot of these places have real hard time holding on to young people, yeah. uh, especially if you get to the point where you lose uh, your high school, say. Um, and, uh, and th- so it's these serious things that, that a lot of the towns have, ha- have had to overcome. So loss of jobs, loss of young people. Yeah. And you said you spend five days there. Yeah. What do you do to get to know the people and their sense of humor? Well, we, uh, we're, we're produced by Frantic Films and the gang over there at the office does a great job of, uh, uh researching these towns and, uh, um, so we have a little, we sort of know who we're going to talk to before we, we ever uh, get on the road. You know the individuals? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and also, I've got a, a, some writers who help me. So we start writing jokes before we ever hit the road. Um, because when we're there, it's like run and gun. It's flat out. It's all day shooting. And then, uh, so we'll interview a number of people dur- during the day or do a couple of, of outings. You know, we'll go... Um, lobster fishing with with Darren in, in PEI, or we'll go to the the the, the um, Vanderbilt goat farm in in Teeswater, Ontario, and then uh, and then at the end of the day, it's back to the hotel and and into the laptops. It's trying to be funny, and and it's mm-hmm. that's one of the hardest things I find about the job is you know staring at a, a blank laptop and and trying to be funny. But we've got we we so we've got a handful of jokes written. But when we get there, we'll realize. You know, maybe we didn't inter- understand part of the, the, the research quite right or, or, or found that, that um, in situ it's just a bit different. So you might have to throw a joke away entirely or just retweak a joke so that, to make it uh, relevant. Uh, but then a lot of the time it's, it's, it's rewriting jokes. So, hmm. And then also it's got to sort of get stuffed into my pea-sized brain over the five days that, that were there. <laughs> I thought this was a really interesting concept in giving voice to these people's stories, these smaller towns, a little bit off the radar, certainly off the radar of, of a lot of the media a lot of times. What do you think a comedy show can do in that respect that, say, a current affairs show can't quite do? Well, like I've, I've encountered, I, I've been witness to a lot of um, who-knew-it moments, you know. Um, there was a town that we did in uh, uh, Buxton, Ontario, just a few hours west of uh, Toronto here near Chatham. And it was the uh, terminus for the Underground Railroad. Very interesting town, eh? Yeah, and it was a designated so, so that freed slaves could, could um, start a new life in farming. And I always thought that with the American movies and American TV shows and everything, uh, uh, about the Underground Railroad, it always sort of stopped at the, at the border, you know, the, the idea being that if they make it to Canada somehow, they'll, they'll be much better. I mean, before Book of Negroes, I think that was sort of the first thing that came along that really explored the the story um, north of the border. Um, but that town, it, it, it was incredible to see all these people. And everybody's sort of biracial now. It's been, it's been, it's been that long, um, you know, 150 years or so. But um, that was an incredible story to, to, to hear. And so it, the idea is if you made it there, you were given so many acres of land to, to farm and the community would help build you uh, a home. And this was a real beacon back in the day for, for the uh, African-American uh, community uh, uh, all across the states. There were the, the African-American community in, in Pittsburgh built a Liberty Bell, a replica of the Liberty Bell, and sent it to Buxton. Hmm. Buxton, Ontario, of all places, with a like population un- like 400. Untold, untold stories. Yeah, sure. exactly. And so, and so this Liberty Bell would be uh, uh, told, you know, when an, a new slave made it there and, and the community would hear the bell and they'd all come out and, and, and uh, help build this uh, person a new home and a new life. And it's like really remarkable stories like that that you had no idea about. Is there something you learned about, well, you grew up in a small town. How is the sense of humor different because of things like that, little peculiarities? 
Well, I think, you know, there's, I always get asked in interviews, you know, what is it about Newfoundlanders that makes them so funny? Um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the uh, a disproportionate amount of the, 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 the funniest people in the um, country are from Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm never really sure. It, it's just, it's always been part of your up, upbringing. I think people, um, people raz each other quite a bit, you know. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, you don't let anybody get too big for their boots. Um, growing up as a Newfoundlander, you hit an age where you ask your parents, why do people make Newfie jokes, you know? And, uh, and my mom always sort of put that to me as a point of pride that Newfoundlanders were okay to have, have a laugh at themselves. And I have found that to be, I found many examples of that across rural Canada. It's like, it's just people hold themselves at a different, it, it's like people are, 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 are proud. People are proud without being precious. Do you know what I mean? That's well uh, said. Yeah. And they're, they're, like, I was afraid when I went into this place, you know, uh, um, are people going to get their backs up? Are they going to be, who is this guy? Is he going to come in and give us a, is he going to roast us, you know? Yeah. I always say it's more of a, a toast than a roast. But I think coming in under the, uh, I didn't, sorry. But they I, seem to get, watching the clips, they seem to get that coming from you. Yeah. You're poking some fun at them, but they enjoy it and they get that it's coming from a good place. Totally. It, it, like, I was, I was amazed uh, on how sort of open people were to it. People were really sort of um, uh, positive about it, and all, not even positive, just casual about it. Like they, they wouldn't really care if I if I was that that I was making jokes about them. Do you find that different from a big city audience? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I think sometimes. I mean, it's weird what people choose to be precious about. I mean, also in Newfoundland, you know, the word Newfie. It's a little bit controversial, in Newfoundland. Some people say that that has connotations to to the Newfie joke, and it makes us sound uh, a goofy. And and um, uh, and in fact, a great thing about my, the generation that I live in is that we have sort of, I think, witnessed the the death of the Newfie joke. But anyway, some people are, are are a bit precious about that word, and they don't want it to be used. The more I travel and find that find that people use the word Newfie in a totally unassuming, um, you know, as a term of affection, or not even of affection just you know we like the way we would use Aussie you know like yeah, just a shortening yeah. of it and, and and then you realize that if you're going to sort of pick a bone with everybody who uses it in a in a not malicious way I think you're sort of doing yourself you're just setting your cause back a little bit do you ever imagine settling down in Pooch Cove I always assumed I would end up back in in Newfoundland yeah, yeah. I guess the idea would be to you know get somewhere career-wise that that I could still be working across the country and based out of Newfoundland. Well, it's a great show. It's a fresh show. I love the concept. Uh, best of luck with it, Johnny. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Chad.